Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are once again on the glorious battlefields of Napoleon Total War Online. And I can't wait. There's always a great feeling when I come onto this game. It is fantastic. I love the online element of this game. But once again, we have Carl von Klauswitz submitting a fantastic replay for us to watch over here, which should be really good fun. And we always know that brings with it really high level gameplay. So thank you to Carl once again. Now we are going to go through the army compositions, but I'm going to try and be quicker than usual, guys. So um, if you do want to skip it, chapters down below. But for everyone who wants to see the army compositions, let's get started now. First of all, we have Carl over here as the Ottomans, one of his favorite nations to play. And he has three of the Nizam Kadet Light Infantry. Very nice. Eight of the Nizam Kadet Infantry, as we can see over here. Interestingly enough, four of these units actually have three levels of experience. So very cheap Ottoman forces, really, when you consider it being able to get some experience on the Bashi Bazooks as well. He's got two of these militia melee troops, just as meat shields to uh, go in before he gets his infantry into the fight. The standard general's bodyguard, and then six of the mounted Nizam Kadit cavalry. Now onto his French ally over here on the right-hand flank. He has four of the Voltigeurs, the standard Voltigeurs. Interesting choice because in online, people don't really tend to take the Voltigeurs. They tend to take the, uh, the light infantry instead just because the other light infantry has more men, the chasseurs, should I say, and uh, they generally do more damage overall. But he's also got the 6th Regiment d'Enfanterie Légère, which is a standard light infantry as well, looking very nice. And he's got four of the Swiss foot, of course, four of the Swiss boyos in the French army. He's also got one of the Fusiliers, of the line, as well as two of the deadly old guard. Very, very nice to see them represented once again. They have to be represented every time a French army is brought, surely. And then one of the very unique guard seamen over there. Very nice, as well as a standard general's bodyguard and four of the standard chasse, five, should I say, of the chasseur Acheval. Now let's look at the Prussian army. And as you can see, setting up, these guys are really going for the hill. Really, really gunning for the hill with this setup over here. But the Prussian uh, Prussian forces has five of the Prussian Fusiliers, the light infantry, as well as four of the standard Fusiliers, um, should I say, as well, yeah, just four of the standard Musketeers, should I say as well as one of the 8th Life Regiment, a very elite regiment over there, and three foot guards with the pom-poms on their hats. So a very, very elite infantry showing from the Prussian player over here, as well as three of the standard lancers, three of these boyos, one of the tower, tower cheese, the tower, tower cheese, yeah, and one of the Lutzo... Lutzow's Freikorps. Lutzow's... Lutzow's Freikorps. There we are. Another militia sort of uh, lancer slash hussar. Is it? Are they... I think they're hussars, yeah. Um, sort of a militia hussar unit. Uh, the Tower Gs are a lancer unit, however, as well as the standard general's bodyguard. Now we come on to Great Britain, and they have five of the standard light foot ready to go. The light infantry of Britain, as well as seven of the standard foot uh, line infantry regiments, one of the Highland foot, the scary boys in the Celts ready to fight over here, as well as three, sorry, not three, um, one of the 88 foot Connaught Rangers, the boys from Connaught, very um, iconic regiment of this time period in the British Army. As well as the Coldstream Guards. Very, very, very elite regiment over there. And we have two of the Standard Dragoons. So, bit of a cavalry advantage for Carl's Coalition. So, let's get this started. But a bit more of an elite um, sort of regiments over there with Prussia, etc. And you can see they are going to match the enemy forces uh, by trying to take the hill with their cavalry. And as you can see... The cavalry of the enemy is very weak 
compared to theirs. I mean, the Chasseur a Cheval, of course, if they get into melee, the Dragoons should win. But they're going to be able to fire some serious shots off before they anywhere get close to melee. Sorry, they had three Dragoons, not two. Um, but yeah, watch this. This is going to be the first shots of the shots of the battle. If we see it correctly, if they get in close enough, they've just got to try and get a bit closer. But you can see the uh, infantry of the British forces are pushing up very quickly, as well as the Prussians. But all I can help, all I can think of, is the fact that they may be rushing into a trap here. Because if they uh, take this hill, yes, it's going to be bloody business trying to take the hill. But if they just marshal their troops on there, it's going to be uh, a bit of a surrounding job for the enemy. As we see the Chasseur a Cheval going in for a charge on the foot. Early doors here with the Dragoons coming through. And that's going to allow just a bit more time for the French army to get set up. As Carl moves his mounted knees, I'm it forward. Taking some pot shots at the general staff, actually, of the Prussians. Um, while the uh, British try and focus on that flank. The whole Ottoman army, though, is moving across. This is all going to center around this hill, as much of the action often does on this battle map. Very, very cool indeed. With the pyramids in the distance. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at that. Glorious, glorious sight to see as the British troops line up. Let's get a bit of a screenshot in there, shall we? What would it be uh, a battle without a screenshot or two of the uh, uh, of the uh, troops? And we hear firing in the back. That, of course, is the light foot coming forward, trying to shoot on the voltigeurs over here as the voltigeurs take some pot shots at the enemy. Very cool indeed. Look at that. That is a view and a half as volleys fire out from the hillside. But we can see Carl is still pounding on the lines of the Prussians with his cavalry. Just taking some a few pot shots here and there. And you can see this Fusilier is already down. 26 men um, already just from shots from cavalry. As well as this uh, musketeer unit down nearly 20 men as well. So some brutal fighting early on as the 6th Regiment Donfantry Leger uses the trees to really do some damage on these light foot regiments. But they're really not taking a huge amount of damage just yet uh, as the Ottomans start to line up and get ready to begin their assault on this left hand side of the hill. Glorious fighting already starting of course. Chasseur Cheval, they're going in forward. Are they going for a cheeky little charge? That might be the case as the Fusiliers of the line march forward to try and put some pound and ground down on these light foot over here and really start taking uh, the fight to the light infantry as they go forward. Carl himself is just waiting for now, taking a few pot shots with the Nizam Kader infantry. But look at that. That is a sight to see, isn't it? With the... Uh, with... The glorious uh, pyramids in the background, if I can speak. We see going for a great charge. What a good charge that was by the chasseurs there. The first charge initially not great from this unit, but the rest of them going straight into the light foot. And the British players actually got a lot of his men. These guys are, these guys are not even on fire yet. Uh, it doesn't seem so. They don't seem to want to fire at all. Uh, but that has really disrupted... The British lines early on sacrificed a lot of cavalry, of course. But the light foot have taken an absolute beating there. Look at that. Fantastic fighting there. Good move from the uh, French player overall. As Carl slowly winds his way around the hill. And you can see this huge amount of cavalry is just able to really extend the lines of the Prussians on this flank. As the Nizam Kedit slightly uh, withdraw uh, into the back as he brings... His mounted Nizam it forward to really put the pound down on his elite units. These are elite units that are getting f he's getting free shots on right now, which is great. Over on the French flank, that has allowed that charge has allowed the French player to really, really push up the hill. But look at that! They are going to retreat slightly, and I think they're just slightly overpowered, out uh, outpowered by the amount of. Uh, a firepower that's in this small region over here. Lots of maneuvering of lines, all that sort of thing. But here come the Ottomans. The glorious Ottomans ready to fight and take this hill. 
as they're taking a lot of shots over here. But the Bashi Bazooks are ready. They're ready to go in and disrupt whenever they can. And the time is about now, probably, when he's going to look to move those Bashi Bazooks forward. So he's got his uh, Nizam Kadet Light Infantry down the back. They've taken a lot of damage so far. Uh, but it is time to, uh, time to push forward this whole flank for the Ottomans. But look at that. A great charge by the Freikor, the militia, into this Nizam Kadet infantry by the Prussian player, just catching Karl slightly out while he was maneuvering these troops. And that has really done some damage to that unit, if not going to make it route. But you can see he's already ready for this one as he's pushing his cavalry again around the flanks to try and put the power down on the flank of the Prussian player. Over on the far right side, we pretty much have a big firefight going on between the French and the British player. Lots of firing going on. Just a straight-up old-fashioned firefight between the two, seeing who's going to win this battle. The foot guards now really starting to take some damage from, as you can see, more lancers are coming forward, and he's just not quite going to get into square quick enough that time. But the, the firepower from behind is just really going to break that lancer's as they're kind of caught in the middle between their own firing lines and the enemy firing into them as well. But this, um, once again, if we have a look at the battle map, like we do every time we come to these battles, this surround is going well, of course, really well. But the Prussians do probably still, at this point, have enough firepower to really repel them. Look how many units they've got um, in reserve in the back that haven't taken any damage. So Carl's going to have to really maneuver well here. Look at these units really down. Down to 12 men. 12 men. That is brutal. 12 men on the hillside. And they're still not routing. Down to five. They are some brave, brave troops there. And uh, Carl is using all his troops simultaneously, which is always interesting. The Bashi Bazooks, though, have they already been charged in? I must have missed. Oh, here they are. The Bashi Bazooks on the side of the hill fighting the Tower Keys, fighting the Prussian Fusiliers, really trying to uh, really trying to break through the line and disrupt it just so Carl can move his men up and really start putting the power down on these troops, as you can see. That's really helped him move up. That's always a great tactic to use, guys, if you are on Napoleon online at some point. There's a great tactic to use. Use a uh, sort of bait troop to charge into the enemy and then move your men so that you're not shot to pieces while you are maneuvering them. Uh, but this, this cavalry is really, really strong right now. And you can see the 8th Life Regiment already down to 36 men. Can't even form square anymore. Same with the Musketeers over here. And that's really going to help out Carl on this flank and break round here so that he can swoop around the back of both of the armies here. Even the French player just holding back is fine right now because it means Carl can swoop around and fully encircle them as glorious fighting just continues on the hillside over here. As the Bashi Bazooks down to 28 men. Where have they found this morale from? They have been absolutely brutally charging through the enemy with so little men. Such brave fighting from the Bashi Bazooks over here. Well, good. Well, really good. Really good fighting. And amazing for them to stay around for so long and really disrupt the lines of the foot guards and everything as the foot guards are just being shot to pieces by the cavalry over here. And you can just see how, how powerful uh, the missile cavalry in this game is. Like any Total War game, really. Missile cavalry is incredibly strong. Um, horse archers, all that sort of thing in the older games. So, yeah, really, really strong. Look at that. Some glorious fighting going on down the line. Let's see whether we can get a nice little screenshot over here. As fighting just continues down the line of the Prussian player. But you can see the mounted Nizam Kadit going in for the charge on that musketeer just to disrupt them so that the Nizam Kadit infantry can come up and start firing into them while they're in square like we've seen so many times before. And the Chasseur is doing the same thing on the French front over this side as he's fully removed, uh, fully run away on this side, trying to extend this clumped up lines over here and really uh, sort of uh, mess up with the British players' formations. And that has definitely helped 
because now you can see the British player is kind of kinked out of position and has this whole line here not firing into anyone while the guard seamen are putting the power down onto them, absolutely destroying those foot infantry units as the 88th Connaught Rangers, brave though they may be, have retreated from the battlefield. And if the 88th foot are going to retreat, you can pretty much bet the rest of the British Army will retreat at that point. But you can see the general staff of the Prussians now getting uh, now getting absolutely destroyed as the uh, British forces are just starting to fall apart. So it was solid for so long and now the, uh, the, the routing of the enemy army is just all coming at once as the old guard. Let's have a look at these boys. Let's watch them get their volley off. Come on, boys. Get ready to fire. Come on, boys. They do reload very fast, to be fair. But a glorious, glorious volley nonetheless. Straight into the units of the foot. As another cheeky little charge from the chasseurs is going to come through. And charge into the Coldstream Guards just to disrupt them even more than they've already been disrupted. And you can see the superior range of the Voltigeurs over here really doing damage to the foot units on that right flank. As Carl's remaining infantry comes up and just routes the rest of the cavalry, uh, rest of the infantry of the Prussians there. The Dragoons are still alive and they are doing some decent damage on Carl's cavalry. But there is so many troops left that they are not going to be able to survive the onslaught of the Prussian and the Ottoman forces. This crazy alliance that has been met and they are fighting in the desert at the pyramids. Look at that glorious old guard firing away again. Oh, and they just sniped the enemy general. Sniped them down. So some great fighting overall all the way through. British players still holding up all the way up here as well. And they do have quite a, uh, a large amount of troops, but just not enough compared to the amount of Ottoman and Prussian forces. And although going for the hill in this map is always a good, good thing to go for, especially when you start on this spawn, because you're so close to it, you might as well. Um, but putting all your eggs in one basket and just deciding to defend the hill does leave you very open to that flank that we saw from Carl there earlier on. Oh, big volley into the old guard there from the uh, standard. Oh, no, the 88th are back. They ran, but they have returned. Their bloodthirstiness is not... Uh, their bloodthirst has not been satisfied just yet. As you can see, the Dragoons are going to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Nizam Kader infantry here as the Nizam Kader infantry try to stab those Dragoons off their horses. And a great charge by the Dragoons there, straight into the Old Guard. And that is surely going to be enough to break the Old Guard, but not lead to the death of France in this battle. And the 88th have gone again. They have fought very valiantly, men. Very valiantly. But unfortunately, it was just not enough for Britain in this fight. The Dragoons, again, are going to uh, hopefully decide to retreat. As the Old Guard hold out against the Dragoons, and everyone starts to fade away into the sands over there, away from the pyramids. The glorious pursuit is continuing as the British general himself tries to get behind his last remaining men, uh, but he himself will run, and when the foot see that, they will run as well. What a great battle. Quick, fast, sharp, and powerful. That's how I'm going to describe that battle. Very nice indeed. And some great kills there. 1,475 from Carl. So really the big difference was Carl in this battle. As we can see, everyone else getting pretty similar kills. But a lot of that from the flanking maneuvers there, which were fantastic. But you can see some of these infantry doing fantastically. 164, 138, 133. What a, that is amazing stats, honestly, for an infantry unit. As we also got the mounted Nizam Kadit doing 122. So he did more kills uh, than double the amount of men they started with. So every one of those men killed two, which is very strong indeed. Uh, as you see, the mounted Nizam Kadit doing so much of the heavy lifting in this fight. Very good indeed. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. What a fantastic battle. Great fun. 
Please do like and subscribe, all that good stuff. If you did make it to this part of the battle, comment your favorite maneuver in the battle, your favorite charge, your favorite unit, that sort of thing. That'd be great. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure as always, and I will see you all again on the next battle.